Hello, my name is Feroz Mahmood and uh, I'm one of the associate editors of the Journal of Cardiothoracic and Vascular Anesthesia of the Perioperative Echocardiography section. Today we are starting a new feature of the journal and that consists of selecting clinically significant articles and then talking to the lead authors in a multimedia fashion and asking them relevant questions regarding the significance, the methodology and the objectives of their research study. As first part of this uh, video podcast, we have selected this article uh, of geometric indices of predicting ischemic mitral regurgitation, correlation of uh, mitral valve coaptation area with tenting height, tenting area, and tenting volume. We're going to be talking to one of the lead authors uh, of this article and asking them uh, pertinent questions that would be of interest to the readership and draw attention to this uh, clinically significant research study. So today we have over here one of the lead authors, that's Dr. Aidan Sharkey uh, from the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, who is also the co-director of the Center for Educational Research, Technology and Innovation, to answer these questions. Welcome, Dr. Sharkey. Yeah, thank you very much, Rose, and thank you for the invite to this uh, videocast. So my first question to Dr. Sharkey would be that this article talks a lot about mitral valve coaptation zone, coaptation area, and its correlation uh, with developing uh, mitral regurgitation and indices of mitral valve remodeling. What is uh, this uh, coaptation zone and what's its correlation with developing the risk of mitral regurgitation? So the zone of coaptation refers to the degree of apposition between the anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflets. And this zone of coaptation extends from the anterior lateral to posterior medial commissure of the valve. And the importance of this cooptation zone is refers to the structural integrity of the valve to sustain geometric changes in patients with ischemic heart disease. So patients with a large degree of apposition have a large cooptation zone and are able to sustain these geometric changes. Whereas patients with reduced apposition between the leaflets or a reduced cooptation zone are unable to sustain these geometric changes and so subsequently go on to develop ischemic mitral regurgitation. So my next question to Dr. Sharkey is that I've read the paper myself and quite frankly I find the methodology pretty complicated and cumbersome. Surely you don't expect busy cardiac anesthesiologists to perform this complex methodology at the point of care but also taking care of a complicated and unstable patient in the heart rooms. So you are correct in saying that calculation of cooptation area is uh, quite a complex process. And this is not something that can be routinely performed at point of care in the operating room. However, the focus of this paper was to correlate changes in cooptation area with geometric indices that we do routinely measure in the operating room. So the geometric indices that are routinely measured in the operating room would include your tenting height, tenting area, and your tenting volume. And so the focus of this paper was to correlate uh, changes in cooptation area with these routine indices and to try and figure out is there a correlation between changes in cooptation area and changes in these routine indices that are measured at the patient's bedside in the operating room at point of care. So my next question is that uh, what are the major findings of this study? The major findings of this study was that there was a negative correlation between all measured geometric indices of remodeling and cooptation area. So the greater degree of remodeling, the less the cooptation area. And the most important finding of this study, we feel, is that the most negative correlation was seen with tenting volume. That is, the in greatest increase in tenting volume was associated with the greatest reduction in cooptation area. And this is quite predictable given that tenting height and tenting area are two-dimensional measurements and are representative of a single tomographic plane. Whereas tenting volume is representative of the entire surface of the mitral valve and it represents the entire topography of the mitral valve. So it's only natural that tenting volume is most closely related to changes in cooptation area. So the next question is, uh, what is the clinical significance of this study? And are there any future implications of uh, this finding of reduction of cooptation zone and its association with the uh, tenting volume? The clinical significance of this study is in identifying valves that are at risk for future mitral regurgitation. 
Just because a valve is non-regurgitant and non-stenotic does not imply normal valve function. And indeed, all valves are at varying degrees of risk for developing mitral regurgitation. However, those valves with increased tenting volume or a reduction in their co-optation area are at significantly increased risk for developing future mitral regurgitation. Our study highlights that potentially using tenting volume as a surrogate for a reduction in co-optation area, we could track these valves into the future and possibly intervene at an earlier stage and also potentially lead to improved patient outcomes. So that was Dr. Aidan Sharkey, the lead author of this uh, important publication that demonstrated the negative correlation between coaptation area or the degree of apposition of leaflets with the indices of mitral valve remodeling, tenting area, tenting height, and particularly tenting volume. Now the editorial sum up of this uh, important clinical investigation is the tenting volume represents the entire topography and the entire surface of the valve and is a better indicator of the global remodeling of the valve as opposed to these tomographic uh, sectional uh, measures such as tenting height and tenting area. And the clinical significance of this study is that this important uh, index of mitral valvular remodeling can possibly be uh, used to track and follow patients who tend to demonstrate lower mitral valve reserve and possibly intervene them either medically or surgically or percutaneously to prevent mitral regurgitation from happening and possibly uh, preventing irreversible remodeling of the mitral valve. Uh, we thank you, Dr. Sharkey, for his uh, time and availability for this uh, interview with the, for the Author Online series. Stay tuned. Uh, there's plenty more to come and, uh, regarding great research articles that are published in uh, the Journal of Cardiothoracic and Vascular Anesthesia. Thank you and good luck.